Hey everyone, how's it going? Elliot here and welcome to the Retro Future. Today we're going to be taking a look at a very cool Game Boy that I have been after for quite some time. For anyone who has watched this channel before, you will know that I am a massive collector of rare, obscure Nintendo Game Boy related items. Uh, I have here a sealed, unused replacement back for a DMG Game Boy. This is the kind of thing that would have been shipped into a Nintendo repair center. So if your Game Boy is broken, they could repair it on site. I've also got this thing right here, another thing that would have been in a Nintendo repair center. This is a cartridge that allows you to test and check the buttons on your Game Boy. We're actually gonna use that in today's video. And then the other things I have in front of me here are various prototype and development cartridges uh, that we use to actually make and produce the Nintendo Game Boy games that we know and love today. But this is the item that we're going to be checking out today. I'm extremely excited about it. Uh, this is a Nintendo Game Boy that was used in a kiosk, a display kiosk in a store at a show. I'm very excited. Let's check it out. So I ordered this thing a little while ago from America um, and I haven't actually tested it yet. I have got a very rare Tetris minuet version in here which I thought we could use to test the thing and see if it works. Um, but I haven't actually tested it yet and I don't even know if we're going to be able to use it in this video because there is a sticker on the front of it here that says for display only units will not work if separated from display. So the display that it's talking about is one of these. These are Game Boy kiosks. Uh, there was two main different ones. There was one that had a little CRT with a green piece of acrylic or perspex in front of it to give it that green tinge that we have on this screen. Um, and that one actually displayed the game through the CRT, which is very cool. And then the other one was more of just a stand that had a Game Boy mounted to it, uh, and you played the physical Game Boy and looked through the screen on the Game Boy. And I believe that is where this one has come from. I've got this thing in an acrylic display case that my friend Matthew from Jelly Belly Custom sells. I'll put that up in the card if you wanna go and check it out. But let's see if it even works. I'm very excited. So we'll slide the little door out of the bottom. Putting things in a little acrylic case makes them look like they're a museum piece. Look at that, okay. The screen is in very nice condition, but it's not brand new, which is relieving because it means that it's not a replacement screen lens. Uh, I can see some very minor scratches on it, which is good to see, um, and some age-related wear down in the corner. Um, but let's see if this thing even turns on. So I've got some batteries in my pocket, as always, and uh, we're gonna push them in. I'm very nervous because uh, I don't know what's gonna happen. If this video is gonna fall short if we actually need that whole kiosk thing. Although I don't know how that would work. Um, here we go, so for display only, unit will not work. Ah, <laughs> well it does work. Uh, however, it is missing some lines on the screen. So maybe we should actually repair that in this video. I haven't done that in a while. Um, now one thing that's really nice is the contrast and the volume wheel is very, very stiff. Now what that means is the potentiometer has not been uh, moved a lot, which is a good sign that it's actually quite a good condition, unused Game Boy, which is really, really cool. Um, you do see some of these things with a bar um, across it, and if the Game Boy's gone yellow, it's gonna leave a sort of a, a white line across there. I'm wondering if there's anything, if it's even gonna work with a game, because it's still, you know, why would they lie to us? It says it will not work. Okay. It is not working, but it should be working. I think it's just because everything needs a good clean. There we go. There we go. So it is actually working. And all the buttons work. And there's that unique Tetris music. Right, so let's take this thing apart. Um, I'm sure it's going to be absolutely normal inside, but I would like to know if there's anything different inside it. I'm also gonna give this back a really nice clean because it is quite grubby and dirty and it's missing the battery cover, so I'll find another one of those. But yeah, without any further ado, let's have a look. So as we begin to take this Game Boy apart, we can see it's in need of a good clean. The seller of this had quite a few of these, as well as a lot of other very rare Nintendo goods. He claims that he bought out a liquidating game store's inventory, which makes sense as to how he could possibly acquire this. Inside both of the shell halves was some very rancid liquid which looked like coffee. As we lift out the motherboard, you can see how disgusting it is inside. 
being that this was built for customers to walk into a store and play on, there's no wonder there's so many stains and spills on it. The button wells are grotty and very worn, which is actually a good sign of this thing's legitimacy. It would have been in situ, mounted in the kiosk, away from pockets and knocks and drops, so the outside shell is immaculate. With all of the parts laid out, let's focus on cleaning the buttons first, then individually clean the shell halves, being sure to keep the stickers dry. Immediately, it is clear that the liquid is very old. The rancid smell and stubbornness to be cleaned suggest it's been here for an incredibly long period of time. I kept adding the hot water and brushed it away, and eventually, it started to clean up real nice. Now it's time to clean the motherboard. I took another brush and dipped it in some 99% rubbing alcohol and then brushed everything clean. The sticky stuff had made its way onto the motherboard, so it was important that we clean that off. Now we can start building up the back of the Game Boy to repair the screen, as we need to power it to see the missing lines. To repair this we need to reattach the ribbon cable to the screen. We do this by holding a soldering iron lightly over the missing lines and a lot of patience. And just like that, the Game Boy is done. I am so, so pleased with this thing. I absolutely love it. It's got so many unique, quirky things about it that are clearly exclusive to kiosk Game Boys. Um, one of the things that I love about this the most is the way that it has worn. There's so many areas that are really battered and bruised, you know, for the buttons, for example. Um, they were very dirty and I had to clean them all with a lot of isopropyl alcohol on the actual button membrane where it hits the pad because it had worn out so much from being mashed. But then when you look at the screen, 
it's absolutely immaculate. And then the stiffness of the contrast and volume wheel would suggest that they've probably never been turned before. And that is a fair statement to, to make because it's actually sub submerged into a kiosk. So you can't actually access the, um, the contrast and the volume wheel. The other thing that I love about it a lot is that the back where the game cartridges go in is minty. I don't think it's ever had a cartridge slid in and out of there. If it has, it's probably only been done once or twice. And that is very in line with a kiosk Game Boy because it would just have one game in the back and then no one accesses it unless it needs to be replaced. The game needs to be switched out, which is probably not gonna happen that often, if ever. So the other thing as well to support that is that the shield is in very good condition as well. There's hardly any scratches on that at all. Not many Game Boys wear like this. They often are very battered and bruised. So as promised, let's uh, put the test cartridge into this kiosk Game Boy. This is a very unique situation here. And then we can check that all of the buttons are working. Um, I have obviously cleaned all of the pins now on the, um, the cartridge connector, so they're lovely. So as you can see, speaker is super loud and all of the buttons press absolutely perfectly. There we go, the end. I'm not very good at this game. Anyway, there we go. That is going to wrap up the video for the Kiosk Game Boy. I'm very, very pleased with it. It's kind of funny that they lied on the sticker. It says, for display only, unit will not work if separated from display, but it works perfectly fine. So I wonder if there's anyone out there who always remembered going into the store and playing on this and thinking, oh, but it won't work if I was to take it when no one's watching. Um, and then, yeah, it turns out the whole time it did work. It's kind of funny. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. If you're new around here, please consider subscribing. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, it means a lot. And let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Goodbye.